Oh, sh what's up? We're in Tokyo. In fact, we're at probably the place in Tokyo that almost every foreigner who's been here has visited. We're at the Sensoji Temple. The first stop for many Gaikokuji when they come to Japan. Sensoji traditionally is a Buddhist temple. Nowadays, Probably the biggest tourist trap in Japan. Still really cool looking though. It's also not what this video is about. Shit, man. It's a madhouse in here. There's so many more foreigners here than when I was last here in November, five months ago. Hotel prices have doubled in the city. I don't know if I can even get out of here. Okay. Found my way onto the back streets. So, what many of my foreign friends here who are visiting Japan for the first time don't know is that just 15 minutes away from here is the most notorious hood in all of Tokyo. It's called Minowa, and it has a very interesting history. On this channel, we like to explore the raw side of Japan. So it may not surprise you to hear that I plan to go there today. Yep. Got the four rent signs showing up already. drying clothes outside their windows over there. First time I ever seen that in Japan. Starving the public order. I love the ingenuity of the Japanese people. Like, who has the idea to convert their ramen shop into a laundromat? There you go. As evidence of the tourist trapness of uh, Asakusa, here you have a very similar temple. This time a Shinto shrine. Without a single tourist walking around. All you gotta do is just come to the worst hood in Tokyo. I assume this is a sink. I've learned a bit more about Shintoism since the last time I was here. What you're supposed to do is you take your money, you drop it off in here. Wait, can I put it in the dude's face? I don't know, but I just did it. And then after you put your money in, you can ring the bell. And you say a little prayer afterward. They've been giving out free tea here. And free hot water. Hot water in Asia is a big deal. It cures every medical problem you could possibly have. Hmm. You know, I don't recall seeing that many Mercedes in Tokyo, but I've been seeing quite a few here. Look at this public disorder. Oh, 
my god. There might be people with their own individual personalities in this neighborhood. Gotta be careful. Ah. This right here is a political campaign poster. Looks like it was slapped right on top of another one. It says right here, raise wages, lower the consumption tax. Tax, excuse me. Yes. Well, those sound like good things. I don't know who this party is. There's a decent chance that those uh, Obasan are gonna vote for it though. Japan, as you may have heard, is the oldest country in the world. Half the population is elderly. And that means the elderly decide the future of the country at every election. It's a weird place to be. It's one of the biggest reasons why Japan still stays kind of conservative relative to the other developed countries. And then again, it's not really any better in the US, is it? I mean, we can't seem to elect anyone that's younger than the age of 70. that up there. Coming up on a very sketchy area called Yoshiwara. And I'm actually a little bit nervous to film. Right outside this park, to my right, you can see a bunch of men in suits standing outside the doorways. They're standing outside of establishments with names like Free Love. The names get crazier than that. I should probably get out of here because a lot of these places are run by criminal organizations and don't want any problems. This right here is the local wanted board. These are all the most wanted criminals in Tokyo. In fact, they're sought internationally. Here, you have Shiko, Shiko. Oh, it's the number of traffic accidents, <laughs> I think, in just this neighborhood. Zero people died, but 63 people were injured. Down here, we have some people that are missing. In the rare chance that you ever encountered a problem in Japan, this is where you have to go. The Koban. The Koban is a police station in Japan. Hi. Konnichiwa. Oh. So, this is what is it? Soprando. Soprando. Okay. Ah, uh, kyo, kyo janai. Arigato gozaimasu. Hai. Kanko kyaku. Nihon wa sagoi. That's that's hilarious. I mean, you would think holding the camera would make these dudes have a few reservations about <laughs> advertising what's going on there, but I guess not. Ooh, this is interesting. This graffiti right here says Sanya. Sanya is the old name that used to refer to this neighborhood and the surrounding areas. The name goes back to the 1600s when the emperor designated this area as a place, well, as a red light district. And a place, well, it developed into a place for nefarious activities in general. 
400 years later, it still has the same rep. It takes a long time to change your rep in Japan. サニアの歴史は何ですかまあ、There you have it. I confess I understood maybe 50% of what he was saying. But he had a nice little wrap up of the neighborhood there. This feels a lot like Nishinari. A lot of run-down, abandoned shops. Granted, you can find those all over Japan. But not in Tokyo. In Tokyo is more of a rarity. These signs right here are basically saying, if you see a crime, report it. Report it to your local police. Be a good citizen. I swear I haven't seen signs like that anywhere else in Japan. So. Well, this neighborhood has arguably been pretty sketchy. Wouldn't say it's been super dangerous so far. But there's one area of the former Sanya that we haven't explored just yet. That area is called Ueno. Ueno is a much bigger area. It's rumored to be home to different Yakuza offices. And before we end our little trip for today, we gotta go check that out. It's about a 30 minute walk from here. So, so we're coming up now on Ueno, which is a much busier area. Interestingly here, you have a giant bike parking garage. Look at all the bikes piled up. I don't think most of these even have a lock. Imagine trying to do that in America. Imagine just having a giant lot of bikes and expecting no one to come and steal them. And keep in mind, this is supposed to be one of the sketchiest neighborhoods in the city. Let's take a walk into the park. It's supposed to be the weirdest park in Tokyo. But considering the number of Europeans I see walking around, I feel like it can't be that bad. Seems pretty damn peaceful to me. So what some people in Tokyo have told me is that Ueno it's a place that's perfectly fine to come to during the day. But at night, if you were to come here, you'll be accosted by an army of homeless people. You might be assaulted by the Hangure, the common thugs of Japan. Well, challenge accepted. I think we can handle it. An interesting thing about Japan is even when you meet homeless people here, you most likely don't even know. And I know that for sure. Because when I went to Osaka and I encountered homeless people, very nice people by the way, you had no idea. Another interesting Japanese phenomenon, an outdoor smoking section. That's how respectful the people in this country are. I have no idea why there's a clown version of Uncle Sam being used 
as a tool to promote this gambling stock. Some things in Japan are just not for you to know. All right. Well, to be honest, I'm pretty hungry. So before we do anything else, let's go find some food. This place is pretty popular. This definitely does not feel like the hood to me. Okay, so karage. Okay. And uh, Kore wa. Not Nante. Horumo. Oh, Horumo. Okay. I got the other one. Yeah. Because, uh. Look at this menu up here. Seikin. Table ga. Oh, table. All reservation. Oh, okay. Sorry. Alright, well. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, they're trying to help me out there, but that dude just came out and told me like all the seats are taken. Damn, this place is that popular? Literally every place is filled up. Where can a guy Gene get some food out here? Alright, finally found a place. Don't even know what food they have. We're about to find out. Especially the people that run the shop in Chinese. But anyway, we've got a feast right here. We've got sashimi bowl. We've got I forgot what this is. I think it's like a tuna skewer. We've got some fried chicken right here. We've got a giant asahi. Salary men over here. I think I'm set. Somebody told me what you're supposed to do with wasabi is you're supposed to put it on top of the fish. Like that. And then you put it in the soy sauce. No idea if that's true, but it tastes good that way. Genius,从中国把到日本的经验。经过四十八年。十八年。哇，好久，好久。日本的生活比中国的生活好。日本太惨了，OK。跟日本人没有问题吗？没，没。OK，他们一直都很有礼貌的。啊，很好，很好。
locking up dissidents, stuff like that. It's just Japanese culture, Japanese society. I think they were just everybody respects each other. Why is that such a foreign concept in the rest of the world? And you know, I'm not saying that Japan is perfect. It's got its own issues. But most of Japan's issues just revolve around not having enough babies, not knowing how to talk to the other gender. Slightly more mundane stuff. They get the important things right. Safety, cleanliness, respect, everything working and being organized. It took me coming to the worst neighborhood in the world's biggest mega city to realize that. Because this is still pretty nice. I'd happily live here. So if you're ever in Japan and you're looking for the most ghetto choice of alcohol possible, this is probably your guy right here. Sake in a jar. It's like $2. This one's like $1. And if that's not enough for you, you can also get sake in a cart. And then of course, if you just want the strongest drink possible, the very appropriately named Strong Zero, it's the drink for you. 9%. Look at the size of that can. You drink a few of these, you won't remember you're in Japan. 